I was just thinking uh, how you'd build an app that watches a video. You'd need to pull out the audio, then use a speech to text service, an OCR model for any slides, a summarizer. That's a serious pipeline. Or you could just not do any of that. Let me show you how that entire pipeline is now just a single API call to Gemini 2.5. Welcome to the show, Io. What do you do here at Google? Well, I'm a developer relations engineer. I show developers how to use Google's AI to solve problems in their applications. Awesome. Well, that makes you the perfect person for this. I set up this massive pipeline problem in the intro, and you just said, don't do any of that. How is that possible? First, let me show you an app that is a great example of this. Here I can enter a YouTube URL, click this button, and then it calls Gemini. So the code made an API call to Gemini, and now it's thinking? Uh, yep, it depends on the video's length, but I picked a short one. Let's give it a minute. OK, it's done. Here's a blog post and a header image based on that video. Wait a minute, Io. That content looks awfully familiar. Uh, yes, I entered the URL for one of your old videos, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, so this app took a YouTube link, watched the video, and wrote a blog post from it. How did it do that? The form I use is defined here in index.html. The field where I put the video link is called YouTube link. The app.py has the main logic. This function, generate blog, post text, takes two things, the YouTube link and model name the user chooses. Then it builds a request with a YouTube link and a text prompt. It sends that to Google's Gen AI and gets the blog post text back. That's it? Just the URL and a prompt? You don't need to give it a transcript or anything like that? Uh, nope. That one call tells Gemini to watch the video, listen to the audio, and write the whole article based on the prompt. So a lot of magic here must be in the prompt. Uh, kind of. The prompt is returned by the get blog gen prompt function. Here it is. And this is what the prompt looks like without any code around it. It starts with the persona that the AI should adopt. These are the top level instructions. And here are the detailed instructions in markdown format. OK. And that call to Gemini creates the text of the blog post. Where did the header image of the article come from? Aha. That's the second API call. It's in the generate image function. It takes the blog post, title as input. For example, the title was Taming the Serverless File System, a practical guide. It gets the prompt that tells the AI what kind of image to make. After that, it sends the prompt and some settings to the image model to get a single PNG image back. These two lines just encode the image to Base64 so we can show it on the web page. So the whole app is really just two API calls, plus some supporting code. That's great, Ayo. Uh, but I have some questions. Uh, go ahead. How much does all this cost? Well, let's look at the numbers. Google counts one second of video as about 300 tokens, meaning a full minute is roughly 18,000 tokens. At the current price of Gemini 2.5 Flash, which is 30 cents per million tokens, that one minute would cost about half a US cent. But that's only after you use up your daily free quota. And you can always switch to low resolution to cut the cost by two thirds. OK. And what if my video isn't on YouTube? Well, the API just needs the video data, not necessarily a YouTube URL. You can upload your MP4 directly or point the API to a video in cloud storage. It still processes the audio and video in that single call. OK. Uh, you showed us your final prompt, and it looked perfect. Uh, but nobody gets that right on the first try. Can you walk us through the process of prompt engineering this? I actually had the AI generate the first prompt as a starting point, but the tone and structure needed work. From there, it was all about iterating. I just kept on adding background context, defining its role, and adding clear layout rules until it finally worked. OK, your app generates a full blog post. What if I just wanted a bullet point summary notes, uh, or even a 10 question quiz based on the content? Well, just change the prompt. That's the beauty of Gemini. You can even put the prompts in a text file or a database. That way, you can change the app without touching any code or deploying a new version. All right. What else can this pattern be used for? 
Well, that's the key. This isn't just a demo, it's a pattern. Gemini 2.5 takes in text, audio, and video, and it can output those formats too, and videos help for the video. That opens up new possibilities, like turning this blog post directly into an audio script or editing that meeting you had into a video highlight reel. Right. I'm looking at this generated blog post. Uh, it's pretty good, but I'd like to simplify the wording a bit. Would it be possible for the user and the AI to work together to edit this blog post? Uh, yes, it would. But that's a bunch of new code, so let's save that for another video. Sounds good. Thank you for sharing all this with us, Io. And, uh, and thanks for having me, Martin. Remember, multimodal models like Gemini can do a lot with just one API call. And there's a lot of power in the prompt. Good points. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Io or me, ask in the comments. And do let me know what you thought of today's episode. I read every single comment. Can't wait to see what you build!